Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's press conference featuring two distinguished ambassadors and former hostages during the Iran hostage crisis. I want to thank all of you for being here on this lovely morning, um, the morning after Argo took Oscar's biggest prize, winning Best Picture. Uh, let me first congratulate uh, the, all of the Argonauts. It has opened a new a debate um, about how Iran and the United States look at each other. And the real lesson is uh, that the events of 1979 and what followed still affects events today. What Iran did in taking my colleagues and all of us hostage was wrong on every single count, historically, legally, culturally, wrong in the context of what Iran's own history. They should not have done it. The regret, of course, is that they did it, and we're living with that consequence to this day. Where are we three decades later? Um, unfortunately, the same atmosphere of suspicion, mistrust, festering wounds still dominates Iranian-American relations. And when the negotiators um, from the five permanent, uh, five permanent members of the Security Council, plus Germany and the Iranian side, when they meet tomorrow in um, Almaty, there's going, to be a, there's going to be somebody else in that room. And I, I think it's going to be the ghosts of 1979. But the ghosts of 1979 will be there. And they will do their best to prevent any progress. They will haunt the proceedings, so to speak. And each side will recite its grievances, as they always do. And the result has been, so far, to continue the 30, more than three decades cycle of futility between our two countries. What do we say? The U.S. says that Iran has rejected um, offer, repeated offers of negotiations without preconditions based on mutual respect, things that the Iranians say they want. The Iranians look at the same situation and they say they will never agree to negotiate um, under pressure with the threat of sanctions and boycotts held to their head. The so-called U.S. two-track policy of engagement and pressure has, in reality, only one track. There's no, there, there's no two tracks. It's just one track. It's just one track. Uh, and that track is multilateral and unilateral sanctions that, whatever their stated purpose or what are their real effects, um, allow the current Iranian government to claim credit for defying an international bully. And on the nuclear issue, in particular, both sides have painted themselves into rhetorical corners. The Obama administration has not offered, and perhaps it feels it cannot offer, um, relief, far-reaching far sanctions relief in exchange for verifiable Iranian concessions on its nuclear program. We should have a relationship of some kind. We have zilch when you face it, and that's not a very good basis on which to have any kind of diplomatic exchange. It could be that the nuclear issue, as it stands currently, is just politically too hard. Not technically too hard, but politically too hard. And that sustained negotiations on other issues, perhaps other smaller, smaller issues, um, is the most, uh, will be the only way to start the countries on a path of diplomatic engagement. So some way of getting out of the last three decades of trading insults, trading threats, and repeating um, empty slogans. Like it or not, the Islamic Republic is what it is. And we do have things to talk about, even if, even if we do not necessarily talk as friends. After all, uh, we talk to many states and other governments with which we are not friends. 
Because only by such a process can we break this downward spiral of hostility that for now over 30 years has consumed both of our countries uh, and now threatens to do something much worse.